I need a car. This is how Yuri Dalmatovsky, a wonderful automotive engineer and journalist, once called his book. Indeed, if not everyone needs a car, then many. But what about those for whom a new car is not available for financial reasons, especially in today's conditions? There is only one way out, turn to the secondary market, and one of the most inexpensive options in this market is the Peugeot 206 sedan. The Peugeot 206 model was introduced in May 1998 as a replacement for the brand's bestseller, the Peugeot 205 hatchback. An excellent design and a set of successful solutions allowed the 206 to remain on the assembly line until 2012 and become the most massive Peugeot car in the history of the brand, more than 8 million copies of this car, and its production has been established in a number of countries in Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America. Buyers were offered several body types, a hatchback, station wagon, and even a convertible coupe. But we are interested in a standalone version with a sedan body. This model, with the factory code T13, appeared later than everyone else, only in 2005, when Peugeot was already hard at work on the 207th model, which was supposed to be the successor to the bestseller. But the main specificity was that the model was developed in the Peugeot Design Center exclusively for the Iranian automaker Iran Kodro. The serial production of the sedan in Tehran started in 2006, at the same time the car began to enter the markets of other countries, primarily Russia, Ukraine, Turkey, Romania, Bulgaria, and Algeria, as well as Serbia, Montenegro, and Macedonia. The project was successful, and in 2008 the assembly of the Peugeot 206 SD, T13, was launched in Brazil, and then in China and Malaysia. It is curious that in these two countries the car was sold under the index 207, although technically it did not have much in common with the base Peugeot 207 hatchback. From a technical point of view, the sedan retained all the main solutions of the hatchback, but the engine range was reduced to only two options for four-cylinder naturally aspirated engines, a 75 horsepower 1.4 liter TU3 JP and a 109 horsepower 1.6 liter TU5 JP4. They could be paired with a 5-speed BVM5 manual or a 4-speed AL4 automatic. Front suspension independent with McPherson struts, rear independent torsion bar with a transverse torsion beam. Since it was believed that the sedan's rear suspension would be under greater stress than in the case of a hatchback, a variant from the 206 SW station wagon was used. In Russia, the car was officially sold from 2006 to 2012, and the price for the Iranians was somewhat lower than for similarly equipped French hatchbacks. To date, the prices of the secondary market for used Peugeot 206 sedan fit into the range from 100 to 420,000 rubles, and the bulk of the offers fall on versions with a 1.4 liter engine and mechanics. In general, the option looks quite attractive, but is it worth making a purchase decision based on price alone? Let's take a look at what their owners write about Peugeot 206 sedans. Hate number five, cabin capacity. Any person making a decision to buy a car should first carefully consider, is it worth buying this particular car? Will he fit into his lifestyle and be able to solve the tasks? Especially when it comes to acquiring a frankly middle-aged car in the secondary market. In the case of the Peugeot 206, you need to understand exactly that this car is small and that, as they say, size matters. As a matter of fact, no one complained about the space in the front row of seats and the convenience of the driver and front passenger. But things are much worse in the back row. With my height of 195 centimeters and weight of 80 kilograms, I sit comfortably in front, but it's already hard for me to sit behind me. The back row is less comfortable, especially for those who sit behind me, because due to my height and selfishness, I don't change the seat adjustment in many cars. Comfort for front passengers is at a height. With my height of 2 meters and weight of 100 kilograms, I sit well, but only a child can fit behind me, and in general, only. Lilliputians can ride in the back, or adults no further than 10 kilometers, the rear seats are only for children, although there is enough space in front, it's cramped, especially with my height of 191 centimeters. It was impossible to sit behind me. Of course, there are those who are quite satisfied with the internal volume of the 206, 
It seems that it is larger inside than outside. It calmly seated four passengers. And cramped, but not offended. But in general, the owners come to the conclusion that the Peugeot 206 sedan is only suitable for a small family with one child, and if we are talking about regular trips in a larger group and over significant distances, then it is better to pay attention to some other, more voluminous model. Actually, in quite a few reviews, the main reason for the sale was precisely the factor of the grown family. I sold it because it became too small for the family, two adults, two children, and a Labrador. Love number five, trunk. One could say that the Peugeot 206 sedan is generally not very well suited for the role of a family car, if not for a very decent trunk. The fact that the trunk is one of the most important advantages of this car is said in almost every second review. Firstly, many authors note that Peugeot designers and designers managed to attach a separate cargo volume to the original hatchback in such a way that outwardly everything looks quite nice. As for the back, the trunk, I think, is attached very harmoniously, the trunk is attached organically, and most importantly, it does not look bulky, but at the same time it is roomy. Of course, we will leave all these praises on the conscience of their authors. But it is important that most authors consider 405 liters of usable volume to be quite a sufficient indicator for most situations. An excellent roomy trunk, everything you need for a picnic in nature fit, shovels, axes, a bunch of food, two tents, clothes, etc. Despite the size of the car, the trunk is large, the baby stroller fits without problems. The trunk contained a stroller and a bag with baby things, everything fits, and even more, I, for example, carried a drum kit. In this case, it is also important that the trunk has the correct shape and internal outlines without any protrusions. But that's not all. The 206 sedan inherited a 2 colon 1 folding rear sofa from the hatchback, and this allows you to carry very large items in the trunk. The trunk is simply unrealistic. Once I had a chance to bring 14 packs of laminate flooring, 6 packs of substrate and a bunch of other junk to Baikalsk, it seems like a rubber trunk, carried interior doors, 2 sets, bags of cement, 6 pieces, 3 meter skirting boards drove without problems. The owners also like other internal containers, for example, a huge glove box, the only thing they complain about is that there is no light in a huge glove box, not seen anywhere else. Two two-liter bottles fit perfectly. Or here, the notch on the dashboard on the passenger side is very convenient. You can put a liter bottle of soda in it and not worry that it will jump out at the turn. Hate number four, cross-country ability and ground clearance. Cross-country ability is clearly not one of the strengths of the 206th Pisic, primarily because of the low ground clearance. The lowest point under the belly is 15.5 centimeters from the road. The thresholds are even lower, there are not even 15 centimeters. So you can forget about curb rides, even Matiska has 1.5 centimeters more there. By the way, in the case of installing engine protection, the clearance decreases to 12.5 centimeters and turns into a gap between the bottom and the road. In general, as the owners write, the car is not for country roads, and even when moving speed bumps, the heart skips every time, and the ears are waiting for the characteristic metal rattle. Someone is waiting, and someone is clinging, you constantly catch the recumbent belly, sometimes with the bumper skirt. But this is mainly near the radio market, there are such policemen. Whoever saw it will understand, outside the city, I struck the crankcase protection a couple of times at the exits from the road to the reservoir. But this is not a jeep for you. Here I didn't expect a miracle from the wad. The main disadvantage is the cross-country ability at the level of the scooter. Where you can strike, you strike. It is difficult to get stuck on good tires due to the low weight, but you will erase the entire bottom 100%. Permeability is nothing. You constantly catch speed bumps with front mudguards. If you don't care about mudguards, it's quite possible to ride on such a good primer. However, the sounds will be unpleasant. I once drove through the forest and drove where I needed to, but I got a full belly of sand and stones. But the front bumper confuses the owners most of all, as already mentioned, because of the front bumper, it's better not to climb curbs, and when parking, remember that the bumper will not hang over the curb, but most likely will rest against it. So it's better backwards, Peugeot does not have cross-country ability as such. 
What kind of cross-country ability can we talk about when from asphalt to the bumper is 8 to 10 centimeters? On the first day I almost tore off my front license plate, it's very low, and you have to get used to this minus. Those who have not learned to park on the curbs in reverse, waiting for the repair of the skirt of the front bumper. Naturally, low ground clearance and a low-hanging front bumper have the most detrimental effect on the ability to drive in any deep snow. January 2021 it snowed heavily and the Frenchman told me no. I had to buy a shovel, 500 rubles, rubber tracks from getting stuck in the snow, 400 rubles, and rub sand from the city's yellow boxes at bus stops. But, unfortunately, we didn't clear the parking spaces from snow and ice, and I decided not to climb on rough crust ice 15 to 20 centimeters high, great car for the city, just for the city, and not for ours villages. I bought a car for my wife in February, when there was still a lot of snow and there was a huge ice track on our street, where my wife damaged the front bumper on the very first day. Now he doesn't want to drive. In general, among the owners of the Peugeot 206, including in the sedan, there are a lot of the fair sex, and although many of them are used to coping with difficulties, I drove it to the country house, nothing terrible happened, at a speed of 20 kilometers slash h and below snuck in, and the tendency to jump over the curbs behind them was not noted, the lack of cross-country ability frankly annoys them. Love number four, galvanized body, winter operation. However, if we talk about winter operation, then the Peugeot 206 has not only disadvantages, but also very significant advantages. Firstly, the car starts up perfectly even in very severe frosts. The engine started without problems at minus 25, it starts up perfectly in winter down to minus 30, and minus 33 it started up the first time after standing for a week, starts with the key at minus 45 without any problems, and indeed rarely failed in our Siberian conditions. Secondly, the owners note the excellently working stove. The stove heats up very well when I lived in Ufa. I went to minus 45 without problems, and the cabin it was plus 25. There are, of course, a couple of complaints about the heater. For example, one of the reviewers notes that it is almost impossible to ensure that the air goes only to the legs. When the switch is set to blow the legs, the airstream is so frail, and at any fan speed, that it seems that if it would be more powerful, in all other positions, everything works flawlessly. Well, it happens that antifreeze leaks, so when buying a car, you should definitely check if there are puddles under the rugs. But the most important thing is that the Peugeot 206 body is distinguished by excellent resistance to corrosion in general and to our salty winters in particular. This is noted in many reviews, there were a lot of small scratches and scuffs on the body. The car has always stood on the street, for 1.5 years nothing is blown, the body does not rot according to our salt and reagents, super, chipped on the body, but no rust. The galvanization is excellent, I'll add from the pluses, the body is well galvanized, there are chips, but there is no rye. Even frank haters who are unlucky with the car and who see only flaws in it are forced to admit, galvanization is real, the body does not rot, and 12 years of warranty against through corrosion were given for a reason. But the muffler is quite rusty, if the body is full galvanized, it does not rot, then the muffler has rotted, it's good that a complete replacement is inexpensive. However, inexpensive is a very relative value. Is 12,000 rubles in 2013 expensive or not? As a result, many owners resort to the collective farm and welding technology. Another problem often mentioned in reviews is the freezing lock of the gas tank hatch. I would have torn off the hands of those engineers who came up with the idea of closing the gas tank hatch with a key. Can you imagine how cool it is in winter? You drive up to the gas station and start jumping around the car to open the frozen lock. After washing in sub-zero temperatures, the gas tank cap lock freezes since it is located outside and is not closed by anything. In general, WD-40 will help you, and do not forget to use this great invention of mankind. Hate number three, comfort and noise isolation. As a matter of fact, no one will expect any crazy comfort from a B-Class sedan. They didn't expect it when the car was on the assembly line and was officially sold in showrooms, and it doesn't expect it now when there are very old specimens on the secondary market. 
As for the interior, its main advantage can be considered quite decent first row seats. The seats are comfortable, 14 hours are easy, the seats, by the way, are very, very comfortable. With my height, 192 centimeters, the front is comfortable, especially if you raise the driver's seat under you. Only the lack of steering adjustment for reach upsets the owners. The steering wheel is adjustable only in height. There is no horizontal adjustment with my height. Unfortunately, if the legs are comfortable, then you have to reach the steering wheel with your hands, as it were. It's a little sad that the steering wheel cannot be pulled still 2-3 to three centimeters towards you, and the fit would be perfect. The situation with interior materials is a little worse. Yes, plastic is hard, and where hard plastic is, there are crickets. These harmful automobile insects are mentioned in a great number of reviews, a plastic salon, which no, no, yes, and creaks or blurs, after winter, the whole car creaks. It is impossible to single out the place of the creak, the rear shelf creaks, something in the driver's door, the back door, sometimes something in the dash, of course, crickets come out from time to time, the plastic of the interior is oak, but this is a budget car, so it's forgivable. In the front a cricket started up on the passenger door. After another two to three thousand kilometers, a second one came to its trill and settled in the driver's door. Now I enjoy the stereo effect. Slightly worse things are with driving comfort. In many reviews, the authors complain that the suspension is excessively rigid, at least for a family car. The suspension, as they say in all kinds of auto magazines, is assembled, and assembled so much that the tailbone starts to ache on Kazan potholes and tram rails. Driving on country roads, where the asphalt, to put it mildly, was caked, is not happy. And, of course, there are a lot of complaints about soundproofing. There is no soundproofing. Where does it come from? Shumka is very average, rather even useless, noise proofing. No, I didn't hear, or rather, I hear everything that happens around, there is almost no noise isolation. Driving on a gravel road is very noisy and uncomfortable after 30 kilometers per hour. Owners find comfort in the fact that classmates have an even worse situation with acoustic comfort. Love number three, equipment. As a matter of fact, the Peugeot 206 has always favorably distinguished itself from its competitors by its high level of equipment, even in the basic configuration. The base already had everything I needed air conditioning, front power windows, power steering, fog lights, a CD radio, central locking, an immobilizer and other little things. I was surprised how much they stuffed there for the money that this Peugeot cost. A comfortable seat with height adjustable support, mirrors in the visors a rear view mirror with anti-glare a leather steering wheel and adjustable in height a driver's glass with a closer comma the equipment pleased competitors have nothing at all in the basic configuration two pillows hydraulic booster music with steering wheel controls air conditioning disc brakes central locking for four doors power windows True, the rear wheels were equipped with disc brakes only for versions with a 1.6 liter 110 horsepower engine, but the XT package could boast even a single zone, but still climate control. In general, the microclimate in the car is praised by the owners. I will pay special attention to the air conditioner. It is gorgeous. It blows like a winter blizzard in summer. I didn't sweat at all in the 206th hot summer. The interior cooled quickly enough. The cold air reached the rear passengers. The air conditioner, like the stove, was very pleasing all the time. Surprisingly, the condo both blows and takes little power from the motor. As for the acoustic system, everything is not so simple. On the one hand, many note the quite decent sound quality of the speakers installed in the car and the presence of steering wheel controls. On the other hand, the head unit comes from zero, so there is no AUX input or USB slots on it. Of course, this problem can be solved. But how exactly to solve it? Replacing the radio with something non-standard, and it can be an Android device with a retractable screen and navigation, or simply acquiring a Penny FM transmitter is up to a particular owner. Hate number two, lack of power and city mileage. As already mentioned, for the Iranian Peugeot 206 with a sedan body, only two engines were left, a 75 horsepower TU3 JP with a volume of 1.4 liters and a 109 horsepower TU5 JP4, 
which could be paired with either a 4-speed automatic AL4 or a 5-speed Mechanics BVM5. All units are worked out, proven, known, and understandable, since they all come from the 80s of the last century. But the consumer properties of different combinations turned out to be very different. If the owners call 109 horsepower cars with mechanics bullets and mad stools, then about 1.4 with a gun they speak like this, with 1.4. It is difficult to say such a thing, it simply does not exist. It's hard to overtake, even if you're driving alone. But these are, so to speak, limiting options, and quite rare in the secondary market. For obvious economic reasons, the bulk of sales at one time fell on the combination of a 75 horsepower engine with mechanics, and we will continue to talk about it. And here it is worth noting that the idea of backslash U200B backslash U200 watt is dynamic and what is not very can differ in different people in the most radical way. Most authors agree that the capabilities of the car are quite enough for urban conditions. Dynamics of 75 horsepower is very good for the city, fully accelerating the car and not letting you feel behind. 75 horsepower, of course, is not enough. I want more, but there is enough in the city without problems. This car is just super in the city. The 1.4 motor is, of course, rather weak, but with skillful use in the city, you can move relatively quickly with it. But there are those who acutely feel the lack of traction in the city there is no need to talk about dynamics with the air conditioner on and two to three people in the cabin everything is very sad i didn't even have enough in the city the car can't drive it accelerates very sour the engine constantly has to be turned in order for it to somehow drive and when you turn on the air conditioner you can forget about acceleration at all the car practically does not drive even compared to the vaz21083 Anyone who got into my car and tried to move for the first time, at first stalled. And what do you want? A torque of 108 newton meters is not even yesterday. Well, with the fact that everything is getting quite sad on the track, almost all owners agree, on the track, the car behaves somewhat stupidly, it must be borne in mind that there are only 75 horses under the hood, on the track, of course, you can say not rides. Cruising speed, 90 to 100 kilometers slash H, low power rolls over. More precisely, it pulls normally up to 60 kilometers slash H, and after that the donkey Eeyore. Step on the gas, don't step, don't go. And if you turn on the air conditioner, get up in the right lane and vomit, cruising 110 to 120 kilometers slash H, then acceleration is very sluggish. Up to 140 can be stoked with wind to the stern or from the mountain, while the engine will growl as if the pistons are about to fly out. The lack of traction on the slopes is especially clearly felt. A couple of times we drove to the sea in a fully loaded, five people plus a full trunk of clothes. Car, it becomes very lethargic and it is difficult to go uphill. I will never forget how I drive on the highway at a speed of 70, fifth gear on the box. There is a steep hill ahead. At some point I feel that the car is now going down. I had to switch to third. The engine turned sour too sharply at speeds less than 2,500. 9 inch and 7 on mine favorite climb, about 1.5 kilometers long and with a vertical drop of 150 m, climbed in 5th gear and at a speed of 95 to 100 kilometers slash h on the instrument, requiring a transition to 4th somewhere in the middle. Pisic, driving into 4th at the same speeds, insists on 3rd. In general, if you want to drive at least somehow dynamically and turn the engine, and high speeds inexorably lead to high consumption. As a result, owners give very different consumption figures in their reviews. Someone writes that the consumption outside the city is 6L slash 100 kilometers, and in the city 10, which is really a bit much for a small engine of such power, someone claims that you can keep within 5 liters per 100 kilometers along the highway, and in the city, at 7. Someone writes like this, if you know how to drive, there will be a consumption of 6 to 7 liters in the city, if you don't know how to drive, catch 10 to 14, and in this case, you know how to drive clearly means a readiness to move calmly and measuredly, without sudden accelerations. Then the lack of power will be fully compensated by low consumption. But the most interesting thing is that approximately the same figures, 10 to 12 liters in the city, 
5.5 to 7 on the highway are also shown by the option with a 1.6 liter engine and automatic even though you drive in mountainous areas and in there is no limit to how hard you press the accelerator pedal love number two handling and agility among the advantages of the 206 there are two that are mentioned in almost every review it is quite possible that it was these advantages that formed the basis of the conveyor longevity of the model it's about handling and agility let's start with manageability greatly managed the process of driving was a pleasure suspension knocked down and moderately hard even at high speed sharply and easily relitzia in general it was easy to manage you don't get tired even during a long ride i broke into an unintentional skid in corners a couple of times since the speed was clearly too high for such a turning radius inside drift it behaves quite predictably unlike many other cars when entering turns at speeds it doesn't seem like you will be thrown out the window in the passenger seat since we have already written about the very modest dynamic ambitions of the sedan and we will talk about a car that will obviously be bought either as the first own car of a novice driver or as some kind of temporary solution for a young family and not at all as an adrenaline generator much more important turns out to be such a parameter as trajectory stability luckily he's in perfect order here's what the owners write in the reviews at reasonable speeds it keeps the road very well in corners it keeps the road very clearly does not scour does not require steering the car keeps the road very well the steering wheel is informative but there are a number of important caveats in a number of reviews the authors complain that this stability is observed only up to a certain limit on the highway a comfortable speed is 110 higher the car starts to drag along the highway lightweight and a short base make themselves felt at a speed of 120 kilometers slash h the car frankly starts to chat on the road it keeps the road well but at 120 on the gps it starts to talk a lot so i don't advise you to drive it fast if the tires are normal then they hold the road normally on the highway the cruising speed is 110 to 130 kilometers slash h if you go faster the car starts to scour a lot this is how the comparison with the hyundai solaris of the same years looks like in the eyes of the author of one of the reviews compared to the solaris the suspension actually swallows bumps better and there is less roll in turns than the hyundai but at high speed the 206 loses to it in sustainability but there is another very important aspect maneuverability here the modest dimensions of a small sedan work exclusively as a plus of course maneuverability this is especially useful in the city small size the ability to park or turn in a very limited space most of all in this car i like its small external dimensions which allow you to turn around in a couple of actions on the narrowest path small car with all the consequences there are no problems with parking it's convenient in traffic jams in general a nimble city car the owners write in their reviews sometimes you still want a more spacious car but at the same time i can't even imagine how to park in the city center in large cars more precisely i imagine and often see the torment of their owners and for such a kid there is always and everywhere a place to park hate number one age and maintenance cost all cars break down even those that are considered the standard of reliability what can we say then about the budget car of the b segment assembled 10 to 15 years ago at the iran kodro plant it will certainly break down and require money for repairs and maintenance since its main disease is called old age the only question is whether these costs will be justified even against the background of a really low price the peugeot 206 was almost the cheapest foreign car at the time when it was officially sold in showrooms and remains one of the most inexpensive options on the secondary market but here it's how lucky buying a used car is always a kind of lottery therefore the assessments of the reliability of the model and the reviews that the owners leave on the internet vary so much some write yesterday i sold this treasure when i handed over the keys to the new owner i felt like a redeemed slave my joy knew no bounds i almost shed a tear i even hugged my mother this car was in my hands for a little over a year but it felt like about 20 years it frayed all the nerves something constantly happened to her she was always under repair not one thing but another 
Others argue, repairs in the service will not take too much money from you, unless, of course, you buy a completely dead Peugeot for 90,000 mileage. The car did not disappoint because it did not make any strain on the budget. Some write that spare parts and consumables cost a penny, and certainly not more expensive than in the case of Korean budget brands. Others complain, consumables are expensive, even such simple things as a set of pads, not original, but not Chinese, cost 2,000 rubles on the market. For comparison, the wife of Toyota has original pads that cost 800 rubles, Peugeot repair is very expensive, the levers are only assembled, and the non-original costs 2,000 rubles. Peace, the original is about 3,500, and after the replacement, the collapse slash gathering must also be done. Who is right? There is no single answer to this question. There is a chance to buy a Peugeot 206 sedan, and with a very decent mileage, which can be operated for another 3 to 5 years with an investment level that does not go beyond the reasonable, or you can run into a real box with problems. As a matter of fact, the most vulnerable nodes and the most serious problems of the Peugeot 206 are well known. For the 1.4 liter TU3 JP engine, these are the cylinder head gasket, throttle valve and the need to change the timing belt prophylactically. In the transmission, failure of the release bearing and breaking off of the pedals of the basket, in the case of mechanics, and failure of the CV joints, which are supplied only with drives and are very expensive, even non-original ones. The main volume of small, not fatal, but annoying breakdowns is delivered by an electrician. Poor corrosion resistance of contacts has become a common problem for cars of many French brands, but in this case, all this is aggravated by the instability of the Iranian assembly. But when, due to oxidized contacts, the light bulbs start to burn out with depressing frequency, this is one thing, and when the cooling system is at risk, this is somewhat different. Spring has come and the cooling fan has turned off. The guilty relay was removed from the connector only without contacts, the copper contacts rotted, the whole thing was a bunch of green mold and dust, writes one of the owners. And such a misfortune happens to this relay quite regularly, because the relay stands right in front of the grate, and it is very difficult for him there. And here you still need to remember that it is strongly not recommended to overheat a 1.4 liter engine. But the problems with the torsion beam are most often mentioned. It is worth running from a car with rear wheels that have risen up like a fire. A lot has been written about the Peugeot 206 torsion beam and how to deal with it, but this is what matters here. As one of the owners writes, the main problem is not even the beam itself, but incompetent people, of which there are many, who undertake to repair it. After the repair of the beam, replacement of fingers and bearings, after two months it began to rumble from behind. I climbed myself and found out that the stub levers, which had to be changed from the very beginning, broke the anthers of the bearings. The result of the fingers are again in the trash, the cons bearings, and the cons beam, because when replacing the fingers, the repairman sawed it and welded it, losing the alignment of the fingers. The new beams come from China, the bearings are immediately in need of replacement there, and you have to suffer with the rest, and the price is 30000 well, there can be only one general recommendation, carefully check the car before buying, and with the participation of experienced people, and then carefully monitor and service all problematic nodes. According to the manual, the service interval for this model is 20,000 kilometers, but for older cars it should be reduced by at least one and a half, or even two times. Well, for those who look after our rare version with a gun, it is recommended to change the oil regularly, at least once every 40,000 kilometers. As one of the owners, part-time master repairman, writes, with proper care, this box will last for many years. Few people follow the maintenance regulations, in particular, oil changes in automatic transmissions, and they drive 200,000 miles on one oil, and then complain about jolts and transitions to emergency mode. And this is very critical, because the resuscitation of the machine can cost 80 to 90,000, which can be up to half the cost of buying such a car on the secondary market. Love number one, balance of price and consumer qualities. In fact, in so many reviews, the owners write about the balance of price and what they get for the money spent. This car is worth the money. There is comfort, 
there is dynamics for the city, but on the highway you just need to be a little more careful and not reap more from the car than it can give, writes one of the owners. The Peugeot 206 is the cheapest Class B foreign car. If you are not embarrassed by its disadvantages and you need a car to drive slowly from point A to point B, you have no desire to overtake slow-moving vehicles, you want to buy a car and just drive, since everything is already there, and you want your car to look good in the stream, then this car is for you, another echoes him. I advise the Peugeot 206 to those who want to buy a car for the first time, or to those people whose budget for buying a car is not too big. You will get the best option for relatively little money, says a third. Peugeot 206 sedan, 1.4 liters, 75 horses, in my opinion, a very worthwhile car. Of course, it is not ideal, but for its price it is better not to find it in this segment, the fourth one supports him.